כלומר, ישמור את נפשך, ואתה נשמור את יצחו, ויחו מעטו, ויד אוי לו. פרנדס, אני בגע לך. תקי את הקוין, הביל, אקסטר צדוקה, ותהיו את המיינד של הרפואה שלמה, של הרפואה של הניה, בס ברכה דבוירה ליה. I don't have the last minute report, but last night they were saying she was fighting for life. A mother of now 12 children, there was a 13th that unfortunately passed away. So let her have her for Shlame and come back. Gesundheit Freilich her to her entire family. This is a woman who is a shlucha dedicated her life to the Ebishter, dedicates his life, her life and her husband and the entire family for spreading Yiddishkeit and bringing Jews alive. What well, we're talking about bringing Jews alive. Let me share with you a fascinating thought on life, purity, death, and purity. The Rambam, in the laws of Tumor Tahara, which by the way, these are the chapters that we're learning now according to the Rebbe's establishing the learning of three chapters every day. The Rambam introduces the whole section of Tuma and Tahara, laws of impurity. So the Rambam reuses, quotes, the verse in Tilim, Leif toir bro le'elokim, God created me with a pure heart. V'ruach nochoin chadesh bekirbi. And we ask, please God, renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, if God forbid it became impure, give me the chance, give me the opportunity to become pure again. A renewal of life, a renewal of purity, a renewal of vitality. And then the Ramam goes on the beginning to explain what is the whole concept of ritual impurity. So he brings the verse that it says in Bamidbo, Hanogea Bemes, anyone who touches a corpse, the Chol Nefesh Adam, the Tomei Shivas Yomim. If a person touches a dead corpse, dead corpse, yes, uh, becomes impure, ritually impure for seven days. Then he says further, Kol Aboel Oyel, the Chol Asher Oyel Yitno Shivas Yomim. Even if you don't touch, excuse me, even if you don't touch directly, but you're in the same room, in the same tent, in a closed area where there is a corpse, the person becomes also ritually impure. How do we become pure? To go to the mikveh, etc., etc. That's not what I want to deal with. In the portion of the Rambam that we learned yesterday, the Rambam says the following. Atzmo is hadog, bones of a fish, v'oiroi, and a skin. Ha'oisim and keli, if somebody has obviously a big fish with big bones and makes some recipients, make some vessels from it, whatever the vessel is. <coughs> Out of bones of a fish, or used the skin of the fish and made the tent as an example. When they come in touch with the dead body, with the corpse, or with the second generation of impurity, someone who touched, etc., etc., does that become ritually impure. And the Ramam says, Not only biblically it doesn't, cannot contract impurity, but even according to rabbinic, because we have certain rabbinic impurities which are very stringent, says fish are exempt from becoming impure. And he says further, not only fish, the green moss which appears on the surface of the water also and anything which is within, which lives, all marine life, ocean life, doesn't become impure. Why? And the Rebbe says the following idea. Impurity means what? Detached from holiness. Severed from holiness. And therefore, death, which is being severed from the source of life, it becomes impure. Holiness, godliness, life, Torah, mitzvahs, is all holy, pure, godly, living, gehen chayenu. This is what life is all about. Vele chay vekayam, eternal king referring to God. Living is purity. Death is impure. Because it is detached from the source of life. But Chassidus explains that fish, marine life, lives within its habitat. It cannot go out of the water and continue to exist. In other words, it represents a creature that recognizes 
that is constantly aware of its immersion, its connection with its source of life. So therefore, it doesn't separate from its life, from its sources of life. It is always bottle, nullified to its source of life, always connected to its source of life, and therefore it doesn't become impure. Telling us, by being connected to God, by being connected to another Jew, by being connected to Torah mitzvahs, we don't become impure. We stay pure and holy. And it is this purity, in that state of purity, that we will be able to enter into the Beis Hamikdash, Bezras Hashem, today.